distinguished guests, dear friends, and fellow Armenians. On behalf of Armenian National Committee and Armenian American Association of Georgia, thank you all for joining us today at the state capital as we commemorate the 104th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. My name is Varduri Agasarkisian Jinyan. On April 24, 1915, one of the darkest chapters in human history began. That night, Ottoman Turkish authorities began arresting Armenian political and religious leaders throughout Anatolia. Over the ensuing months and years, some 1.5 million Armenians were killed at the hands of Ottoman authorities and hundreds of thousands were exiled from their homes in what became known as the first genocide of the 20th century. Today, 104 years later, the facts are clear and historiography abandoned. And yet, there are still those who continue to deny this crime against humanity, hoping that we would forget that the world will not hold the perpetrators accountable. The burden of the genocide till now borne only on its victims now. It also falls upon the shoulders of those who have benefited for so long from its bitter fruits. We do not covet anything it's not really ours. We press our case not for retribution, but because as an ancient people who lived in faith and forgiveness, we thirst for justice and seek true repentance and an enduring redemption. The price for staying silent in the face of intolerance is too great. We must strike at the heart of the denial throughout events like this in state capital and throughout the US and the world. Let us recommit ourselves to one purpose today, to remember the intolerance of the past and ensure that it does not continue in the past. And now I would like to introduce our first guest speaker, the legendary chief of the Atlanta, city of Atlanta, and the commissioner of Clayton County, Eldrin Bell, for the invocation. Thank you. May we, in our own humble way, bow our heads and close our eyes. God of wisdom, God of love, God of power, we come bound by Moses and bound by Jesus. We invoke your presence in this place, this hour. And as we come together, whatever God we serve, let there be no gap between his will and our words. And our words come to on remember that gracious day. As you know, the same year that my mother was born, 1915 to commemorate and honor those who gave the full measure of their being. We come now to empower those of us who are left to dedicate ourselves to the future. We are grateful for this place, this dedicated place, this house of lords, senators, governors, who come together to allow us to be here to commemorate these beings. And now, as we close this prayer, let those who have come and even died be remembered in our hearts and may we commemorate them by repeating their gracious words and as long as we remember nobody died in thy name we pray amen, amen.
Thank you, Chair. Now I invite our next guest speaker, the Chair of Army and National Committee of Georgia, Sarkis Agasarkisian, for his speech. Last year, at the same time and same place, we were together commemorating the event of the Armenian genocide and feels like it was yesterday. I have been speaking at this event now for half of my life. It is the 100th anniversary of the genocide, but the memories and history are not going anywhere. No, no matter how much we want to put this behind us, it is impossible because we can't allow it happen again. Turkey is denying the facts and trying to fabricate history, which will keep the door open for another genocide to happen to the Armenian people or to others. We can't be quiet about genocide like the entire world was quiet when Turks were viciously slaughtering a whole nation. Martin Luther King Jr. says, those who do nothing while witnessing injustice and wrongdoing do worse than who commits act of injustice. He believed and declared that the privileged have a responsibility to do what they know is right. Good afternoon. My name is Sarkis Agasarkisian and I'm the grandson of genocide survivor. I have heard many stories directly from survivors Every time my grandmother would get together with other survivors, I would listen to story after story, and it was impossible to comprehend how any human being could have done those inhuman acts to other human being. Those acts did not come from human, but they came from evil. The blood was shed for evil. Just try to ask yourself a question. What would I feel if I witnessed my entire family being beheaded in front of my eyes? And this is exactly what happened to my grandmother. Or if any mother, or if my mother was raped in front of my father, or my people were forced to leave their homes and sent to desert, desert and systematically killed or starved, or seeing newborn babies and small children thrown into the river to die, watching people forced into churches that were then lit on fire and hearing their cries, or watch your own motherland being taken from your people that have lived on there for over 3,000 years. The Armenian story is very similar to the story of Job's in the Bible. Job was a man of perseverance. Job continued to worship God. All of his hardship and his faithfulness to God restored him when the earth gave him hell. So Armenians did the same thing. Armenians still exist because of their faith. Christianity was started in Armenia by the disciples of Jesus, and God chose them 1,700 years ago to be his light. This is not just an Armenian issue. This is an issue of all of humanity, and that is why we are here today. The Armenian genocide is not an allegation, personal opinion, or point of view. Rather, it is widely documented fact that is supported by an overwhelming body of historical evidence. The facts are undeniable. As a nation, we must support passage of the Armenian Genocide Resolution. Denial will only continue to empower enemy, and it will one day lead to much greater evil. Despite formal recognition of the Armenian genocide by the U.S. government in 1951 and 1981, successive United States administration, fearful of offending Turkey, they effectively supported the Turkish government's revisionism 
by opposing the passage of Congressional Armenian Genocide Resolution and objections to the use of the word genocide to describe the systematic destruction of the Armenian people. This is wrong. Our nation should not support Turkey's campaign of denial and its obstruction of justice of more than 1.5 million Armenians and 500,000 Greeks and other Christian and minorities. Today, Turkey continues to cons consolidate the fruits of the crime, benefiting from the theft of vast assets and the exile of ancient nations from their historical homeland. Rather than supporting Turkey's denial, the U.S. government should pressure Turkey to come to terms with its past. The U.S. government has no reason to fear the loss of Turkey as a strategic ally. They have proven themselves to not be an ally, but rather an enemy. A just resolution of the Armenian genocide would decrease regional tension, open the door to improve Armenian-Turkish relationship, help perform Turkey into a pluralist and tolerant society, and contribute to an end to the cycle of genocide. And perhaps it would help Turkey to embrace nations like fundamental equality, that all persons are created equal and have the right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Unfortunately, Turkey's continuous denial of the Armenian genocide has set dangerous precedent. In January 12, 1990, seven days pogrom broke out against Armenian civilians population in Baku, Azerbaijan, during which time Armenians were beaten, tortured, murdered, and expelled from the city. There were also many riots on apartments, robberies, and arsons. According to the Human Rights Watch reporter Robert Cushion, the action was not entirely or perhaps not at all spontaneous, as the attackers had list of Armenians and their addresses. This program of Armenians in Baku was one of the acts of ethnic violence that has continued by Turkey and its sister country, Azerbaijan. This program against innocent Armenian civilians in Azerbaijan led to the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, which is ongoing to this very day. We keep watching history repeat itself. On 23rd March 2015, the Minister of Defense of Azerbaijan stated that they accumulated necessary weapons and equipment to destroy 70% of the entire enemy on the first strike. The main weapons were imported from six countries, Russia, Belarus, Ukraine, Israel, Turkey, and South Africa, totaling of $13 billion. On April 2nd, 2016, Azerbaijan violated the ceasefire on its contact line with nagorno karabakh and also known as Artsakh, launched unexpected war against nagorno karabakh using various caliber mortars and even employing TR-107 rocket engines in the southern of the front line in Azerbaijan's aggression and war crimes. Armenian civilians, including children, were killed and several soldiers were beheaded. The bodies of the captured servicemen were returned with signs of torture and mutilation. For use in the ongoing conflict, Azerbaijan has recruited mercenaries from Turkish Grey Wolf and Islamic State to kill Armenian civilians and soldiers in nagorno karabakh However, this is not the first time the Azeri people have benefited from radical terrorists. During 1990, mercenaries and terrorist groups from Afghanistan, Chechnya, Turkish Grey Wolf, and Al-Qaeda were recruited by Azerbaijan. During the post-war years until recently, Al-Qaeda terrorists have recovered, relaxed, and lived in Azerbaijan. To make matters worse and to maintain control in the region, both Turkey and Russia are aiding Azeri aggression. 
Israel alone sold more than $5 billion worth of weapons, and Russia gave them $5.5 billion worth of weapons. Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh have become their playground. The Nagorno-Karabakh conflict is part of a broader Russian plan aimed to ultimately introducing Russian troops into the region as peacekeepers. This would strengthen Russia's geopolitical position in the Caucasus and would mean that Western influence is being marginalized. Last year, President Trump admitted that Turks killed 1.5 million Armenians in the motherland, but he did not use the word genocide. We encourage the president to freely call it by its name, genocide. And for con Congress to pass the Armenian Genocide Resolution and to secure the safety of the Armenian people from another genocide. Thank you very much, and God bless you all. Thank you. Now, I invite our next guest speaker, Julieta Stepanian Napkarian, the professor of Emory and the chair of Eastern European department for her speech. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I think much of what Sarkis and I and others say, uh, those who aren't speaking, uh, we're speaking for you and those you remember as well. We've been doing this for too many years. But we must, must continue. In today's fractious world, we often struggle to find ways to bring people together. To do this, it becomes particularly crucial for us to appeal to our common humanity. Although some might hold that to find commonality, it's necessary to avoid difficult discussions, history has shown that it is precisely at such times that we absolutely must face uncomfortable truths. To do otherwise does not resolve a problem, it simply like a simmering flame, postpones it. Whether it is the truth of slavery and injustice in America, or the truth of slavery and genocide by the Ottoman Empire, the future of humanity will always be limited by its denial of the past. Inconvenient truths cannot be dismissed simply by deniers as fake news, and repeated calls for justice and reconciliation cannot be empty words. As other peoples who have endured unjustifiable terror, we Armenians carry the trauma of our past and the trauma of the present. The tiny mark of a slave on my grandmother's face, Ottoman postcards cynically displaying the bodies of lynched Armenians, and nightmares of my husband's father, who learned to sleep as a child with his eyes open during the massacres, all testify to the horror. And today, our brothers and sisters in Armenia, in Artsakh, and in Turkey pay the price of this ongoing injustice. Along with voluminous archival documentation outlining the fact of the Armenian genocide, there is a new exhibition documenting crucial humanitarian aid by the United States military to refugees from the Ottoman slaughter. While the effort would involve key personnel, such as General Pershing, the exhibit also includes an early letter by President Theodore Roosevelt in 1915 that specifically refers to the Armenian uh, massacres 
as the quote, crowning outrage, crowning outrage of the global war. The Armenians, he continues, quote, have suffered atrocities so hideous that it's difficult to name them. U.S. Ambassador Morgenthau described the genocide specifically, quote, as a campaign of race extermination. And countries such as France today have officially recognized this as such in their legislation. But permit me to be clear, this is not a matter of Christian versus Muslim. And those who attempt to reduce this to this binary effectively dismiss the point that this is a crime against all humanity. Indeed, some brave Turkish scholars, too, have been confirming the genocide. Although Turkey has taken in many recent Syrian refugees, it was Ottoman Turkey that created past refugees, with struggling Armenian survivors of its brutal death marches to Syria. Indeed, my father was born in a Syrian refugee camp, his mother being pregnant with him during the death marches, and he came to this country uh, from that camp. Although it is a crime in Turkey to insult Turkishness, actually now um, more Turks are finding out that they have some Armenian blood. So what does Turkishness mean? Although President Erdogan has called for the extradition of Saudi nationals who killed and dismembered human rights reporter Jamal Khashoggi, Turkey itself has the most jailed journalists of any country today. Along with the clampdown now in Turkey, uh, which is becoming increasingly authoritarian, there have been a multitude of arrests of Turkish academics and others. Last year, for example, the Central Council of the Turkish Medical Association, the TTB, issued a humanitarian concern about the brutality of Turkish military and other forces in northern Syria, but they were promptly accused by uh, Erdogan as being, quote, terrorist sympathizers. Indeed, members, these Turkish members of this medical association have received death threats. President Trump is currently in Atlanta for a summit on drugs. Maybe he's just flown out. Uh, but sadly, although he has used the Armenian term for the events, he has refused to use the modern term genocide to describe the systematic murders of Armenians. Ironically, though, the very term genocide was coined by Yemke in 1944 after studying the Armenian precedent. Major Ar American newspapers of the Times covered the situation. The New York Times alone had 145 articles about the genocide in the single year of 1915 and referred to it specifically in terms as, quote, systematic, organized by the authorities. While other countries openly recognize the genocide and many U.S. states and congressional leaders, our president, leader of the most powerful country in the world, is reluctant to use the G word because of political and economic expediency. Indeed, perhaps the twin Trump Towers in Istanbul should stand for moral leadership and moral conscience, not be subject to questions about moral compromise. 
At a time when the U.S. addresses Russian efforts to influence elections, we cannot ignore long-standing efforts by modern Turkey to lobby and influence American politicians to deny the genocide of Armenians in their imperial past. Although we certainly should expect countries, including Turkey, to pursue their national interests, national interests must not be based on lies. Hate and lies must not win. The very future and the very nature of humanity is at stake. Thank you. Now I would like to introduce our next guest speakers, Honorable House Representative Deborah Bismore and Honorable Representative Bruce Rogers for Armenian Genocide Resolution Introduction. I just first wanted to let you know, first of all, good afternoon, and let you know that I was very honored to have been asked to carry this resolution for the recognition of the genocide that had occurred. Because I believe that it may have happened to this group of people, but that means it can happen to any group of people. And we have to stand united to make sure that this never happens again. So the resolution reads, the, it's House Resolution 145 and sponsored by myself and my colleague, Representative Roger Bruce, honoring the worldwide victims of genocide and recognizing March 12, 2019 as Georgia's Day of Remembrance of the, of the Armenian Genocide of 1915 to 1923 and for other purposes. Whereas one and a half million men, women, and children of Armenia descent were the victims of brutal genocide perpetuated by the Young Turk government of the Ottoman Empire from 1915 to 1923. And whereas the Armenian genocide and massacres of Armenian people have been recognized as an attempt to eliminate all traces of a thriving and noble civilization over 3,000 years old. And whereas the denial of the Armenian genocide by the present day Turkish government continues to antagonize the Armenian people concerning their own rightful place in history. And whereas by raising awareness of and openly condemning the atrocities committed against the Armenians, Georgians are reminded of the need of constant vigilance in order to prevent similar atrocities in the future. And whereas recognition of the anniversary of this genocide is crucial to guarding against the repetition of future genocides and educating people about the atrocities connected to this horrific event. And whereas Georgia is home to over 500 Armenian families and Armenian Americans living in this state have greatly enriched our state through their leadership in business, agriculture, academia, government, and the arts. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the House of Representatives that the members of this body recognize March 12, 2019 as Georgia's Day of Remembrance of the Armenian Genocide of 1915 to 1923 in remembrance of the one and a half million people of Armenian ancestry who lost their lives during this horrific time. Be it further resolved that the clerk of the House of Representatives is authorized and directed to make an appropriate 
copy of this resolution available for distribution to the Armenian Independent Cultural Association of Atlanta, Incorporated. Thank Representative uh, Deborah Bosmore and also Representative Roger Bruce. The, years ago, when we went to Roger Bruce's office, we had very l limited days left to introduce the resolution, and immediately ha he acted on it. He wanted to make sure that we don't miss the opportunity for that particular year. He really did great job. He's a part of our community. He's part of the history of Armenians. And that's when we met uh, Representative Deborah Bosmore when she was not representative, so we became friends. And uh, then, of course, that was suggested by uh, Representative Roger Bruce to, uh, for Deborah Bosmore to pass the resolution this year. It was a great job they did. Thank you for, thanks for both of them. I, I didn't come with, with the intent of making a speech. I just came to support. Uh, and it's easy to do this because, uh, you know, our backgrounds are similar. Uh, you know, people were taken from our native country and uh, countries, actually, and uh, brought over to this country on slave ships. Uh, many of them didn't make it. Uh, they ended up in the ocean. That's where they're basically buried. And uh, our, you know, to your point, uh, our ancestors also were brutal, brutally killed, uh, hung from trees. Our women were raped. Our children were slaughtered. So we have a lot in common. And I just don't think it's proper for any country, any individual, anyone to go through what your community has gone through or what ours has gone through. And we stand united in trying to make sure that it never happens anywhere else. So thank you. Now I'm going to invite our next guest speaker, Nedan Watson Mushegian, for introduction of Armenian Artsakh or Negoro Garabakh resolution. Resolution, honoring and recognizing the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic and for other purposes. Whereas the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic has a long and storied history, holding a cherished place in the Armenian people's history and culture, and whereas the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic declared its independence on December 10th, 1991, after a long struggle that in some respects continues to this day and the persistent demand for self-determination was an inspiration to people of many nationalities in the region, becoming one of the catalysts for the breakup of the former Soviet Union. And whereas through the course of the last two decades, the people of Nagorno-Karabakh Republic have shown tenacity and perseverance in the face of war, massacres, economic deprivation, and other tremendous hardships and whereas for more than 25 years, the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic has stayed true and faithful to its citizens by remaining independent while working to bring change and stability to the Caucasus region and by holding free and fair elections and referendums that were widely declared as a model for the region. 
And whereas international observers, including the United States, have assessed the May 3, 2019 parliamentary elections in the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic as free and transparent now. Therefore, be it resolved that the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic and its citizens are honored and recognized for their sacrifices, dedication, and resolve in the face of adversity. The international community is encouraged to give appropriate recognition to the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic as a free, independent, and sovereign democracy, and best wishes for peace, prosperity, and continuing success are extended. So resolved this 24th day of April, 2019, Senator Donzella James, District 35. Thank you. I'm the great grandson of an Armenian genocide survivor who came over here because of the word of God that told them to leave their homeland. Born at the foot of Ararat, my family's homeland is gone or in other borders. So in terms of land mass, we have no inheritance. And it's at times like this we remember the pain and the loss that we've experienced. Some of us are looking for comfort, someone to just say it's okay. Others look for vengeance to make it right. But none of these will bring our healing. Hi. We've waited to be whole until our offenders admit their offense. But this is not where our healing will come from. 400 years before the birth of Messiah, the prophet Yeshayahu, we say Isaiah, said this. He was wounded for our sins. He was bruised because of our evil doing. And the punishment for our peace was laid upon him and by his stripes, by his lashing, we are made whole. My broken people, so many times God would have given us healing and we turned it away. Yet he stands today with his arms opened and his nail-pierced hands to give you back what you lost. We stand here together in the memory of what happened, hoping that others will recognize this massacre. But every one who gave their life, every soul who gave their life for the name of Jesus in our homeland now stands before the throne of God in white robes, having received the crown of life. And they stand in their own assembly today, wondering when we will notice the massacre that continues on our calling today, because we have focused more on our pain than on the calling of Christ in our own lives. For 100 plus years, we have been asleep. We have been mourning. It's enough. It's time that we pick up the cross the reason we were born, else we have no inheritance in those that have died, else we have no inheritance in the blood that they've shed. What has God called for us to be? In a day where everything is relative and everybody has their own truth, will we stand here and allow Turkey to have their own truth? That it was just an act of civil war or that it wasn't really a genocide? Will we allow that? I tell you, there is one truth. And God has called us to be that plumb line that stands and shows what is right, what is true, what is up and down, what shows the mason how to build the wall straight. I stand here today as a plumb line amongst you and asking you to take up that calling for which our ancestors died to be the plumb line to the world, to no longer just be satisfied with personal devotion to the cross, but be ready to take the gospel to the world. God has sown us among the nations. What was meant for evil, God has turned for good. And now we are in a place to take his light 
everywhere. I encourage you to do that today. May God be with you. Thank you for this opportunity. Now I'm going to invite our next guest speaker, William Sanders, the Chief Investigator of Solicitor's Office to introduce Congressman John Lewis Slater. Good afternoon. Dear Dr. Akasarki, as, Georgia, as Georgia's fifth congressional district representative, I respectfully extend my deepest sympathy as we remember and honor the 1.5 million Armenians, people brutally killed during the Armenian genocide. Remembrance is a powerful concept. In situations like these, remembrance makes us revisit dark places full of tears and bloodshed. However, remembrance also allows us to admire the bravery and sacrifice of those who came before us. It provides perspective for our, for our lives and highlights one of our biggest purposes on this earth, to love one another. This year is the 104th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. Today, people all over the world will stop and remember the 1.5 million Armenians, people killed between 1915 and 1923. I applaud your dedication to preserving the memory of those who lost their lives as you assemble here in Atlanta to comm commemorate this day, I ask that you remember our purpose. Best wishes to you and your organization. Sincerely, John Lewis. Sanders is an old friend of mine. We serve in uh, law enforcement for a very long time together. And he's a very active member of the Army and National Committee. He truly is dedicated for the cause of the Army and Genocide Recognition. And I want to thank him, give him special thanks for it. Thank you. Atlanta City Council always, every single year, like a rule, does a resolution for Armenian Genocide. This year we are honored to have City Council member Michael Julian Bond with us to present the document. By the way, Julian Bond, it's, uh, Michael Bond is Senator Julian Bond's son. I'd like to say good afternoon to everyone. It is a, an honor to be here on behalf of the Atlanta City Council and our government. And Atlanta prides itself as being the home of the civil rights movement. And if you follow the news lately, we are still trying to deal with the Civil War in Atlanta, still trying to deal with that legacy. And so I want to echo with uh, my esteemed colleague Roger Bruce said about sharing these legacies. My great-grandfather was born in slavery uh, here uh, 
during those times and it's only two generations back. This is not long ago, this is today. And we need to be active in making sure that not only that the healing occurs, that the intentional preventive measures are put in place so that no people in any place have to ever suffer uh, this type of genocide again. But to the matter at hand, I have a pro proclamation from the Atlanta City Council in observance of the Armenian Genocide Remembrance Day. And I'll read it in pertinent part, whereas the Atlanta City Council joins the Armenian National Committee of Georgia to commemorate and mourn the sufferings of the Armenian people when from 1915 to 1923, more than 1.5 million Ar Armenian men, women, and children were murdered or sent to their deaths on death marches. And whereas the United Nations Convention on Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide defines this action as the destruction of a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group, and the Armenian Genocide is acknowledged to have been one of the first modern genocides, whereas the Armenian Genocide Remembrance Day observed annually on April the 24th is consecrated as a national holiday in Armenia and is memorialized uh, across the Armenian diaspora, uh, dispersed in communities all across the globe. And whereas the uh, centennial observance of this commemoration, 2019, marks a specially significant year for the Armenian Genocide Remembrance Day. Whereas while the Ar Armenia is one of the world's oldest civilizations and was the first country to officially embrace Christianity as a national religion, the bitterness of their early 20th century genocide has not tarnished the pride Armenians, the pride of Armenians in their in their rich history, culture, and traditions. And whereas the Atlanta City Council commends the Armenian community for dedicatedly remembering all who needlessly lost their lives through the evils of this senseless Holocaust. Now therefore we be proclaim that the members of the Atlanta City Council on behalf of the citizens of the city of Atlanta do hereby commemorate this 24th day of April 2019 as Armenian Genocide Remembrance Day in the city of Atlanta. We recognize and honor uh, the Armenians who perished in the 20th century genocide as well as those who perished during the atrocities time uh, that we are, and it's time that we urge all people to affirm our commitment to tolerance, justice, kinship, and for a moral, upright society. In witness whereof, I've set my hand and calls the seal of the city of Atlanta to be here and to affixed, signed by all members of the city council and its president. Congratulations. Now I'm going to invite our next guest speaker, the Honorable Member of Armenian National Committee of Georgia, forever supporter of Armenian genocide events for years and years, Superior Court Judge, Honorable Chief Judge, yes, <laughs> Honorable Thelma Cumming Wyatt Moore for her speech. Thank you so very much. Good afternoon, my friends. I come to share with you today as we commemorate with our memory as well as with our actions the tragedy 
of the Armenian Genocide. Today, April 4th, April 24th, marks the 104th anniversary of the beginning of the Armenian Genocide. I join with you and all people of good conscience throughout the state of Georgia, throughout the world, in commemorating this tragedy in human history. On this, the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide, let us renew our commitment never to forget the horror and barbarism of this event. We must remember, we must speak out, we must teach the next generation about the systematic persecution and murder of millions of Armenians by the Ottoman government. As Americans, we are blessed with freedom and security, but that blessing brings with it an important responsibility, and we still have to work on securing that freedom and security, even here in America. By commemorating the Armenian Genocide, we renew our commitment always to fight for human dignity and freedom. We send a message to the world never to allow genocide to be perpetrated again. Even as we remember the tragedy and honor the dead, we also honor the living. Out of the ashes of their history, Armenians all across the world have clung to their identity and have prospered in new communities. And I am so very happy to be an honorary member of the Armenian National Committee. Our state of Georgia is fortunate to be home to a vibrant Armenian American community, a community which participates in every aspect of civic life my dear friends, Georgia is richer because of your presence and your activism. The strength and perseverance of the Armenian people is a triumph of the human spirit, and you represent that today and every day as you live your lives. This refuses to cede victory to evil. The best retort to the perpetrators of oppression and destruction is rebirth, renewal, and rebuilding. Armenians throughout the world have done just that, and today they do it in their homeland as well. A free and independent Armenia stands today as a living monument to the resilience of a people. I am hopeful that the United States will contribute to the rebuilding and renewal of Armenia. Let us never forget the victims of the Armenian Genocide. Let their deaths not be in vain. We must remember their tragedy to ensure that such crimes can never be repeated in our human history. And as we remember Armenia's dark past, we can take some consolation in the knowledge that its future is bright with possibility, just because we as human beings will not tolerate this perpetration of genocide again in our lifetimes. Thank you. Now I'm going to invite our next guest speaker, our honorable and distinguished member of Armenian National Committee, a friend forever for Armenians, 
and the supporter of our genocide commemorations, one of the founders of this event with my brothers, former mayor Bill Campbell. Thank you very much. It's a, uh, an honor to be here again, as I have been for the last uh, 20 years. And I always believe that uh, our cause is just, and there will be a, a moment when we will no longer have to actually have a ceremony because uh, Turkey will lift their objection to the obvious, when the world will continue to recognize the, uh, the genocide that occurred in 1915, and if all of us will be able to celebrate the fact that the Armenian genocide was the beginning of a terrible tragedy that is yet to be acknowledged and certainly has not been, uh, it's not been dealt with in a way that we believe would speak to justice. And so on behalf of the city of Atlanta, which uh, I began as mayor here in this uh, same uh, hallway, uh, I have a letter from uh, the current mayor, as each of the mayors over the last uh, 30 years have done. And so it's a pleasure and an honor to be able to read this letter from Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms. And it says, Dear Chairman, I'm honored to recognize the Armenian National Committee of Georgia's meaningful service and to offer my deepest sympathies as we pause to remember the 1.5 million Armenian men, women, and children who lost their lives during the Armenian Genocide. The city of Atlanta is proud to join the Armenian National Committee of Georgia in commemorating the 104th anniversary, and we salute the committee's continued efforts to promote acceptance while fostering a deeper understanding and abiding respect for all. On behalf of the people of Atlanta, I offer my sincere best wishes for a memorable and remarkable commemoration celebration, signed Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms. And I present this uh, to you, uh, Sarkis and to Rosie. On behalf of the city of Atlanta. I'm going to invite our next guest speaker, Noel Watson Mushayan, for his word and benediction. Barabzes, our master Sichi for Megan Kam Darvan Mitz Kavak Vinke Fire in Chinkos. Okay, but that's enough Armenian. Mais am Boschenka Lutzret Surpokio. No, yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's just what I said in Armenian was it's like one time we see Ar the Armenians of Atlanta in a year and we don't speak Armenian. It's kind of odd. So I just wanted to greet you. <laughs> so this is the 104th anniversary of the Armenian genocide. And I, I want to recognize something that sometimes goes unnoticed that every organization, uh, every state legislature, and now I think we're to 49 states. Every group that acknowledges the Armenian Genocide in some ways does it to their own peril. And I congratulate everyone for their courage to stand up for what is right and what is true. But you know, the truth is a two-edged sword. The Word of God says that the Word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. That it pierces to the dividing of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and discerns the thoughts and the intents of the heart. It is very obvious and it takes no great explanation to most of us that, to understand that genocide is wrong, but I want to challenge you that there, if, if there is no such thing as objective morality and there is no such thing as absolute truth, then we have no philosophical, moral, logical, or theological foundation for the belief that anything was right or wrong. 
2,000 years ago, a man claimed to be the embodiment of truth. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Lots of theistic religions can talk about the supremacy of God, the holiness of God, the righteousness of God. But I want to challenge you that in, while we remember our suffering, or remember the suffering of our forefathers, that only in Christianity do we, do we find a God that shares in our suffering. For He has borne our griefs. Yes, we may not have the answer to every question of why, but how many of you have been in a situation where something grievous happened and you didn't want an explanation, you just wanted someone to be with you there? That is exactly what the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel, the God who our forefathers proclaimed was the God of Armenia, that's what he did. He came and he took our place. That's why he can say that he is the way. And he is the truth. And he is the life. Because in him I don't just find a good way to orient morality. I find the spirit of truth who is with me, who is in me, who has saved me. And as I look at the beautiful colors of the Armenian flag being held by our, our faithful flag bearers, I think of the blood-stained robes of Jesus Christ that was shed for the remission of the sins of the world. So as I said, truth cuts both ways. That same Jesus said, no greater love has any man than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. What did he command? Love your enemies. What did he command? Pray for those who despitefully use you. What did he declare? Blessed are you when you are hated and rejected by all nations for my name's sake. What was his command? Go and preach the gospel to every nation, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, behold, I am with you even to the end of the world. Heavenly Father, my God, I call on the spirit of grace to come minister grace and mercy to these your people. Lord, I know that the descendants of a people are in your eyes still bearing the names of their forefathers or else you would not have called your nation Israel by a man who had died hundreds and thousands of years before. But it says when you remembered the promise that you made to Abraham, you rose up a deliverer to bring them out of Egypt. Now God, I am asking you that you remember the promise that you made to our forefathers. Lord, we repent, we turn from our wicked ways, and according to your promise, which your word says, you will hear from heaven, you will forgive our sins, and you will heal our land. Lord, I pray for the salvation of the Turkish nation. I pray that truth would invade their society. So it's not something that they're being pressed to do to admit the truth of the genocide, but something that comes from a broken heart that says, forgive me, I have sinned against you and against heaven. Holy God, now, by the command of your word, I bless these people as you so commanded, saying, may the Lord God bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious with you. May he lift his countenance to you and establish you in wholeness, life, and peace. In the name of the King of kings and Lord of lords, to whom every knee will bow and every tongue confess, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I want to thank you all for coming today as we commemorate 104th anniversary of Armenian Genocide. Thank you and good afternoon. God bless you. <laughs>